So today what I wanna talk about is dollar cost averaging or not dollar cost averaging, especially as it pertains to as we get past the halving. So we actually talked about this uh, about three or four days ago and we determined that dollar cost averaging post the halving is not the best idea. And I'm gonna explain why that is and the technique that I'm gonna be using moving forward. So this is what we are talking about today. Of course, we're talking about cycles, four-year cycles. I'm still a big believer in those. I still think they have uh, relevance. And what I wanna take a look at is a time frame because we can't go to the future because I don't have a crystal ball. But we can take a look back in time, 2018, 19, 20, 21, and 22 for the last halving. Now, we already had our Bitcoin halving this year. That was on April 19th, 2024. So what I'm going to take a look at today is three types of dollar cost averaging in the last cycle. We're going to take a look at what uh, our returns would be if we started on January 1st, 2018, which was right after the peak of the previous uh, bull cycle, which uh, ended in uh, December 2017. We're also going to take a look at what it would look like if we DCA'd from January 1st, 2018, just to May 11th, 2020. And also take a look at what it would our returns would be if we started dollar cost averaging on May 12th, 2020, which was the last halving, to November 30th, 2021, which was essentially uh, the big, huge bull run. So let's take a look at that first piece. We're going to take a look at dollar cost averaging between January 2018 all the way to November 31st, 2021, and what that would look like. So I'm, of course, stealing all the information from a uh, friend of the show, uh, Ben, from his uh, website, Into the Cryptoverse. And this part right here, you can sign up for the, the, the DCA tool. It's very free. It's free to use. And we can see that if we just put in $10 a day from January 1st, 2018, and stopped on November 2021, here's what our results would be. It's actually pretty good. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, 10 bucks a day. If we would put that into Bitcoin, just taking a look at Bitcoin itself is right in the middle. You're up 645%. You would have invested $14,000 roughly, and you would have 105,000. That's pretty good. Congratulations for not a lot of time, uh, roughly three years. You outperformed every single class out there. You've crushed S&P 500. You've crushed traditional equities. You've crushed gold and precious metals. And uh, you've done pretty good. Uh, ETH, you would have done even better. You would have been up 1,576%. So uh, almost two and a half uh, better than Bitcoin. Cardano, 25.74%. Link, 36.38%. Solana, 4,000%. Matic, almost 5,000, and Doge, the king of all meme coins, 7,500%. Now, uh, there's some that would have uh, definitely underperformed. That would be Stacks, the uh, layer two solution, uh, which is smart contracts built on top of Bitcoin. It's only up 443%. Uh, still not bad. Atom, AVAX, Near, and Injectable Immutable X, of course, just getting running in that time frame. It would actually be down <clears throat> quite a bit. So that was... Again, just taking a look at dollar cost averaging for roughly three years straight and not changing up a thing. So, of course, when we're taking a look at this, we're thinking to ourselves, well, Rob, why would I get into Bitcoin? Why don't I just do a bunch of altcoins? I mean, you're telling me right now, altcoins are the way to go. No, it's not what I'm saying. Altcoins are great, but you got to pick the right ones. Here's a snapshot of January 2018. Let me know if you know these altcoins that were in the top 18. Qtum, Icon, Bitcoin Gold, IOTA. Neo, Stellar, all right, NEM, and some other ones. Of course, the top 18, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash was number four. I don't know if that's even the top 30 anymore. And then, of course, we've got uh, Dash, some people have heard that, Monero, Tron, ETH Classic. But I mean, some of these you, you, you've never heard of or you may have heard of in passing. That's why when we talk about altcoins, it's very risky. Risk to reward, uh, the reward's quite high, and so is the risk. So. Let's just break this down, taking a look at the same crypto that you buy into. But let's go from just January 1st, 2018, again, after the all-time high in 2017, and you stopped at the halving and what it would look like going into November 2021. So remember, you are dollar cost averaging from you know, January 2018 just to that halving of the previous cycle. You'd actually have done better by just stopping your dollar cost averaging. Bitcoin, you'd be up, you would have invested 8,620. 
and you'd have $79,000. Some people would say, well, I don't, I don't have that much. Yes, you don't have that much because you didn't put in as much, but your ROI is 200% higher. Solana, $1,255. ETH, 2123, ADA, 3178, Matic, 55, Link, 55, and Doge, again, crushing it, almost 10,000%. Congratulations. And of course, some other ones down there. So now that we've taken a look at that, let's just play devil's advocate and say, okay, well, what would happen if I just dollar cost average just from the day after the halving to the bull run? Because, you know, that's what I want to do because as, as things start going up, that's what I want to invest to. Not so fast. So again, $10 a day for May 12, 2020, the previous halving. And we ended on November 3rd, 2021. How do we do? Pretty bad, quite honestly. That's why like right now, as we're getting into this, the return on investment is diminishing, especially for the number one crypto that's out there, which is Bitcoin. And I think this could actually happen again. Now I don't have a crystal ball, but if you take a look at historically, this isn't the greatest time. Bitcoin's still up 213%. Yes, you've beaten everything. You've beaten everything in S&P 500, most of the equities that are out there, precious metals, probably even real estate. Definitely real estate, 213%. Well, not definitely, but sure. You're doing pretty good. Near, 240%. Adam, 412. St Stacks, pretty good. 588. AVAC, 608. ETH, 641. ADA, 914. And what do you notice about this? You're taking a look at this and you're like, you know, if I'm taking a look at the alts, I'm crushing the alts. Look at Doge, 4,300%. Matic, 4,600%. Solana, almost 10,000% up. And that is a wildly different from some of these other charts. So we can tell that the, the lower down on the totem pole that you go as far as the different altcoins, you can see that as we get past the halving, altcoins have a better return than some of the top cryptos, Bitcoin being number one. So does that mean that you shouldn't invest in a Bitcoin? That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that as far as the risk versus reward and the, and the ROI, there are some diminishing results. So then let's take a look at this. And this is where most people get stuck. And this is why people call crypto and digital assets a scam and a Ponzi because they get in when everybody else is getting in, when they think that it's like the hottest thing of all time. So look at this. Let's say we dollar cost average on October 2021 and we see how it goes. Well, what usually happens is you get that big pump and then everybody comes in, all the different tourists. Then they write all the way to the top. They think they're geniuses. They tell their family and everything else. Then it goes and they last for like five or six more months after that, maybe seven. And then it goes to like zero. And this is the problem. And this is where we see like these types of return on investments and just how awful it actually is. Look at Bitcoin, negative 62%. Injectable, 967. Near, negative 80. Stacks, negative 83. Solana, negative 87.9%. So as we get into this, just be aware that as far as dollar cost averaging, for me, when I'm looking at this, Bitcoin looks pretty good. I mean, as far as like in the beginning, but then as we get past the halving, it kind of trails off. And then of course we have some alts, but those are risky. So right there, we talked about this last time, I would just say stop and that's it. But there was one more thing that uh, really pulled this all together. And that is what I would like to call dynamic DCA. And what is that? Well, let's take the same example. Let's say we take from May 12th, 2020, because before that, everything's good, right? If we go from January to May or January to November, we're good. But May 2020 to November 30, 21, again, we're right after the last halving to the bull run. Let's say I do what's called dynamic DCA. What is that? Well, I'm taking a look at the time and risk bands, which I get from Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, links in the description. And you can see that when we're time in these risk bands, what I wanna do is I wanna not buy when they're at a higher risk band. Meaning if we're in the 0 0.9 to 1.0 on the far right-hand side, that means that there's only been 18 days when it's been that hot for the Bitcoin price action. 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 is only 80 days. And then, of course, when the price starts to go down, the risk reduces. And this is how many days you're actually in. You can see right here, the 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, that's the lion's share, which is right in the middle of where Bitcoin's been. So what I want to do is I don't want to buy in 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 or 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7, 8, 8 to 9. I just want to start buying right here only 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And then 
when it drops in price even more, if we have some other black swan event or something, I'm going to say, okay, I want to buy some more, but I want to double what I usually buy. And when it drops again to this one to two, I want to quadruple. And when I want to get to the zero to 0 0.1, I want to 6x what I usually buy because there's only 134 days in the entire existence of Bitcoin of when this actually is. And what I like to do is I like to download the app on my phone and then it just gives me these notifications like, hey, Rob, wake up. Uh, right now, the Bitcoin risk is 0 0.6. Do you do something? Well, for me, not. But when it goes to 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, you know I'm buying. Two to three, one to two, and so on and so forth. So if we take a look at that, if we would have just done that, and we would have invested in from last, last having May 12, 2020, to November 30, 2021, instead of that 200%, we would have done dynamic DCA, our profit and loss, our ROI was 561% just by stopping buying and then doubling, tripling, quadrupling, 6Xing what I usually buy. Now, if you want to find these time and wristbands, there's a link in the description, and that's for uh, Ben's site. Now, there may or may not be a sale going on depending on when you watch this, but uh, you can check that out. It's 39 bucks a month, or they have yearly, or they have even a lifetime one if you want to go that route. But there is one last thing to take a look at, and I thought it was interesting and I didn't include in the original video. I'm going to compare DCA equal amounts to dynamic DCA. You know, today is April 22nd, 2024. We just had the uh, Bitcoin having three days ago, the ending date right here. Let's just go to June 1st, 2022. This is what I should have been doing the whole time. And I, I dabble in it, but I but now I see the error in my ways. I should have been doing dynamic DCA. Check this out. If I dynamic DCA'd in from June 1st, 2022, again, that uh, example that we took a look at when everybody leaves because they think it's a Ponzi, and I would have stopped dollar cost averaging on April 22nd, and I would have done what's called dynamic DCA, Bitcoin 10 bucks a day in those time and risk bands, I would have had, I would have put in $60,000 and I would have 192,000 or a 217% increase. But let's say we do DCA equal amounts. I'm only up 151%. So how would that look like on smalls? Let's take a look at Ethereum. If I did Ethereum 10 bucks a day, same time frame. I would be up 85%. If I would do the dynamic, I'd be up 124%. Let's take a look at Cardano. If I would have done this whole thing and I would have dynamic DCA'd, I'm up 55%, which isn't that great. I gotta be telling with you. Uh, Cardano's been an underperform. But if I just would have been like, hey, DCA every day, forget it. I'm not going any dynamic stuff. I'd only be up 36%. So again, even though it's not minuscule, it's a lot. I mean, 36 percent versus 55 percent you're still outperforming the s p 500 let's take a look at this how about polka dot ah 36 percent that's not too great how about dc equal amounts only 25 percent really bad quite honestly how about uh chain link again dc equal amounts i'm up 91 percent dynamic dca 125 percent and so on and so on and so on. so look there's a lot of things to break down in that video i know it was a lot Watch it a couple times, but it's the whole thing remains pretty much the same. There are some ways to increase your return on investment. There are ways to actually get around what you're actually trying to do and just take a look at it a little bit different. Now, of course, I am not a financial advisor. I can't give you financial advice, but just take a look at this and determine if this is right for you moving forward. That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. We talk about it's time sensitive. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.